With advances in modern medicine, people are living longer and longer. The secret to longevity has as much to do with what we don't do as what we do do. I have found that most of what people think lead to a long, healthy life is just plain wrong. This is the man spending millions to become 18 years old once again. Using the best science, trying to do all the appropriate interventions to neutralize my aging process. For thousands of years, people have tried to extend their lives. What once seemed like a fantasy from science fiction is now inching towards reality. Scientists have started to understand how aging works and discovered first ways to extend it. It seems like we've now collected enough data to live longer than ever before. This is the ultimate guide on how to live up to 100 years. Statistics is defined as, quote, a branch of mathematics dealing with the collection, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of masses of numerical data. Statistics provide insight into the probability of certain events to occur. For example, one out of four employed adults is satisfied with their boss. Golf cart accidents account for 1 in 22,000 emergency room admissions. 1 in 119 people is called Maria. Back in the day, only 1 out of 28 middle schoolers wasn't allowed to join the school choir. One out of one has never recovered from this event. Now consider this. This is a graph showing the life expectancy of men and women in the US today. Over 50% of men will reach 73.5 years and over 50% of women 79.3 years. The statistics from other Western countries look similar. However, it really gets interesting when we see regions where life expectancy is much higher. In recent years, scientists have started to understand how aging works. As we get older, cells in our body become more and more dysfunctional. Damages in the genetic information or DNA accumulate in our cells and they slowly lose their function. Some cells become so-called zombie cells. They leak molecules into the environment and contribute to chronic inflammation. Other cells get damaged so much that they slowly transform into cancer cells. At the same time, stem cells, crucial for our healing process, get exhausted and the resilience of our immune system diminishes. As a result of all of this, our hair gets gray, we get wrinkles, we lose muscle mass in our vision, and we might become a world leader in today's society. These are all things that happen to every human being on Earth. However, some individuals appear to age better than others, living longer and healthier lives. Fortunately, we have more than enough data to understand which factors contribute towards longer lives. Over 100 references and numerous data points, all summarized in one video. This binder, by the way, is empty. Why? Because printing ink is expensive. I have divided this video into several sections, trying to explain how each factor influences life expectancy. Some of the factors are common sense, but to be honest, some of them also surprise me really. Ooh, intriguing. Let's go. Sleep. Five years. It's 1963. A young teenager named Randy Gardner was preparing for a science fair. He planned something unprecedented to win the first prize, staying awake as long as possible. When scientist William the Man caught wind of his plans, he took the first plane and flew to Gardner. The experiment started. At first, everything seemed to be going fine, but soon the teenager started having trouble focusing. His speech started to slur, he couldn't hold conversations, and he started hallucinating. Over the days, his hallucinations became worse and worse, until he broke the world record and won the first place in the science fair. Although he seemed to recover fast, he reported a few years later that he since suffered from occasional insomnia. We all know that sleep is important, but good or bad sleep can even impact our lifespan. In 2023, scientists completed one of the biggest sleep studies. They compiled data from 172,000 people in the US. Every participant had to answer the following five questions, and you can ask them yourself. How many hours of sleep do you get a day? In the past week, how many times did you have trouble falling asleep? How many times did you have trouble staying asleep? On how many days did you wake up feeling rested? And how many times did you take medication to help you falling asleep? Since there are five questions, you can have a score from zero to five, depending on your answers. You score one point if you sleep between seven to eight hours a day, have trouble falling or staying asleep less than two times a week, feel rested at least five days a week, and use no sleep medication. About four years later, scientists checked up on the same individuals using publicly available databases. People who had a score of 5 were 30% as likely to die for any reason, 21% as likely to suffer from heart disease, and 90% as likely to die from cancer, compared to those who scored a 0 or 1. Another study followed more than 21,000 twins in Finland for 22 years. Here they found that people who were regularly sleeping less than 7 hours daily were 21% to 26% more likely to die of any cause than those who slept for more than 8 hours. Some of you might argue that people who sleep less than 7 hours might have some underlying disease and that is true in some cases. 
but there is also something else going on. When we fall asleep, our body undergoes a series of processes to support overall health and well-being. Hormones are being regulated, our immune system is supported, and the waste clearance system in the brain is more active. If we had little or bad sleep for a couple of days, not much happens. However, if we are sleep deprived for longer periods, all these processes get deregulated. The performance of our brain declines, inflammation in the body is increased, and our risk for diabetes or heart disease increases. It is estimated men with good sleep, as we've defined it earlier, having a sleep score above 5, live up to 5 years longer than those with a sleep score of 0 to 1. Women live up to 2.5 years more if they sleep well. It is recommended for children to sleep between 9 and 12 hours, teenagers to sleep between 8 and 10 hours, and adults to sleep between 7 and 8 hours. Chronic stress, 2.8 years. Joanne Cameron is a 72-year-old retired teacher who experienced troubles with a hip. Her walk was slightly off, but the doctor told her not to worry about it too much since she wasn't in pain. One day though, she received an appointment for an x-ray and massive deterioration of a joint was found. She had to undergo excruciating surgery, but still she didn't feel any pain. Her doctors were baffled. They questioned her and she never felt pain or stress in her life. And with that I mean she once broke her arm as a child and she didn't realize it for 4 days and she described giving birth as quote, a tickle. The doctors investigated further and found that she carries unique changes in her genetic information or DNA. As a result, her brain physiology is changed, leading to a buildup of anandamide in her brain. Anandamide is a molecule that is part of the endocannabinoid system of the brain and has calming effects. As a result, parts of the signaling in her brain works differently and she doesn't feel pain. People of this genetic variant are generally described as happy and calm, similar to people who take in certain substances that hijack similar pathways. I guess that's what you call a natural high. <laughs> Help. And in Cameron's case, it even made her resistant to stress. But stress is actually something which can be very good. Whenever we feel stressed, our brain releases different hormones. The hormone adrenaline increases heart rate, sweating, blood pressure or breathing rates. Cortisol helps the body to maintain steady supplies of blood sugar and increases digestion. In short term, stress can be very good by heightening our senses, but oh boy. <laughs> Chronic stress is something different. Chronic stress can have serious consequences, causing imbalances in our bodies. These imbalances have been shown to reduce brain mass and are linked to mental health problems, including depression. Chronic stress also increases the risk of suffering from heart disease, autoimmune disease or Alzheimer's disease. It is estimated that chronic stress can reduce life expectancy by up to 2.8 years. So what can we do to avoid chronic stress? Well, stress is something subjective and some people might be more resilient than others. However, most of the time our bodies will tell us when we experience chronic stress. We might suffer from insomnia, low energy, emotional withdrawal or change in appetite. In these cases, professionals recommend taking a step back, learning mindfulness, regular exercising and allocating time for leisure activities. And sometimes we might also learn techniques to reframe stress and that surprisingly can then impact our biology. In one study, participants were divided into three groups. Each participant had to remember a text for a presentation. The first group was then told that the best way to reduce nervousness is to completely ignore the source of stress. The second group was told that stress is actually something positive, the higher heart rate and faster breathing actually helps us. And the third group was allowed to play video games. Awesome. Each person had then to present what they remember from the text in front of an audience. The crowd was instructed to react negatively, they kept frowning, crossed their arms and did everything to make this an unpleasant experience. Afterward, their performance was reviewed. Those who were instructed to connect stress with something positive overall performed better, they remembered more and they smiled more, they were more confident. And they also exhibited lower blood pressure and several markers in their blood indicated that they were in a heightened state of relaxation. And chronic stress might not only affect us. When the US Civil War neared its end in 1864, prisoners of war suffered horrible conditions. After they finally went back home, they still had to deal with high levels of stress and trauma as they often lost everything. Fast forward a few decades. The descendants of these prisoners of wars experienced shorter lifespans compared to the descendants of individuals who had not been imprisoned. This phenomenon could not be explained by social structures, food availability or any other factor. Instead it is something we call transgenerational epigenetic inheritance. The exact mechanisms are still poorly understood, but chronic stress and trauma seem to cause changes that can be given to the next generation. This might also explain why the Dutch famine in the 1940s is linked to heart disease in descendants today. And we have similar reports in relation to the Chinese famine in the 20th century. But transgenerational epigenetic inheritance is still not fully understood and remains controversial to some degree, so also take it with a grain of salt. Loneliness, 15 years. 
Our next topic is different. It's about happiness. Some might believe that happiness can be bought with money. I mean, who has ever been sad on a jet ski? Others might find fulfillment in a job or hobbies. I personally am very happy that you watched this video. No, in all seriousness, thanks for watching. Everyone experiences happiness differently, but research suggests that true happiness might impact our lifespan. In the 1940s, researchers at Harvard University launched one of the longest studies in human history. Over the next 75 years, they tracked Harvard students and children from Boston and tried to find out what made them happy. The scientists regularly interviewed them, drew blood and asked for their medical records. After nearly eight decades, they had the answer. Having friends is what makes a life fulfilling. And that is more important than ever. At any given point, approximately one in five people reports feeling lonely. And the experience of loneliness and social isolation can have true impacts on our lifespan. When we feel lonely, our body releases cortisol into the bloodstream as a stress response. High levels of cortisol can then increase blood pressure and cause mood swings and headaches. In the long run, this can increase the risk of heart disease and cancer. High cortisol levels can also impact the brain, which might explain why loneliness is associated with an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. In one study, over 2,000 elderly adults were surveyed over 10 years. It was found that those who reported feeling lonely had a threefold higher risk of developing dementia. In another study, it was found that social isolation is associated with systemic inflammation. This inflammation is then associated with heart disease, cancer, and autoimmune disease. And that is especially bad, as a study has shown that socially isolated men have an 82% higher risk of dying from heart disease. Unfortunately, extreme isolation has been consistently shown to reduce the lifespan of a person by up to 15 years. In contrast, numerous studies have directly linked strong social connections with long and fulfilling lives. Marriage is a good example. On average, married men live 2 years longer and married women 1.5 years longer compared to those who remain unmarried. Additionally, married couples often receive diagnoses of diseases earlier. And married men are three times as likely to succumb from heart disease. And similar effects also have been reported for having children. And the reason why marriage or having children is so beneficial for us seems to be that we tend to take care better of ourselves when we are in these kind of relationships. And this effect is especially strong in men who then tend to visit a doctor more often and also overall have a healthier lifestyle. And as a reference, I'm going to include a why women tend to live longer than men compilation. Similar to having a significant other, having friends is also important. In a study following 30,000 individuals over the age of 50 for 8 years, researchers examined 35 different health and psychological outcomes. They found that those who reported having good friends were 24% less likely to pass away during their time. Having friends is also associated with positive health behavior, such as a 9% increase in the likelihood of exercise, a 17% reduced risk of depression, and a 90% lower likelihood of having a stroke. But we also might have non-human friends. Sounds weird, I mean pets. Are you a dog or a cat person? Well, doesn't matter. Having cats or dogs both positively impact our lifespan. For example, studies have shown that heart disease patients overall have a longer survival if they are pet owners. And there are many reasons for that. When we have a genuine bond with pets, then we are also more relaxed around them. And we also exercise more. I mean, have you ever been to a park? But of course, don't adopt a cat or dog just to live longer. It doesn't work like that. Benefits in life expectancy seem to come from genuine interactions with the pets. So come on, just cuddle them later and thank them. Exercise, 4.2 years. When was the last time someone really motivated you to make a change? Maybe you have a role model, someone you really appreciate and someone you strive to be. Do you have someone who motivates you to exercise? Well, if not, how about 85-year-old Hiromo Inada, who recently became the oldest person to finish the Ironman? So come on, if an 85-year-old can swim 2.4 miles, cycle 112 miles and run 26.22 miles, then you also can get up and walk for your local park. I don't know, but physical activity is important to live long and healthy. When we're physically active, our respiration, breathing rate and heart rate increase. When we do sports on a regular basis, some parts of our physiology changes. We reduce the levels of triglycerides and upper lipoprotein B and increase high density lipoprotein. Regular exercise also supports the energy metabolism of cells and oxygen supply. Aerobic exercises also strengthen the heart muscles and can help to slow down the aging associated decline in heart function. 
As a result, we have a low risk in developing diabetes, high blood pressure, heart failure, or obesity. Regular exercising also helps us to reduce age-related muscle mass loss. It is estimated that we lose between 3-8% to of our muscle mass every decade after the age of 30. Especially weightlifting, sprints, bench presses and other exercises help to delay this muscle loss. Regular exercising alone can increase our lifespan by up to 4.2 years. It is currently recommended to be active 30 minutes a day 5 times a week. Some might not say, well, that's too much for me. But even exercising 15 minutes a day or 90 minutes a week has been shown to have some effect on lifespan. So yeah, stay active guys. Diet and obesity, 10 to 14 years. In the 1930s, scientists aimed to study the impact of male nutrition on growth and life expectancy in rats. Given periods of starvation across the globe, they hypothesized that rats consuming fewer calories would have shorter lifespans. However, they were surprised to discover the opposite effect. Taking in less calories seemed to increase the lifespan of rats. And other researchers were able to replicate these results in worms, flies, mice, and even monkeys. This is what we call calorie restriction. Calorie restriction is defined as a lower intake in calories without malnutrition. And calorie restriction has become the most effective non-pharmacological intervention to increase the lifespan in animals. So scientists are currently trying to find out if something similar is also true for humans. In a pilot study, participants had to reduce their calorie intake by 25% for two years. Within these two years, people who adhere to calorie restriction exhibited different benefits in their bodies. These include lower oxidative stress markers, lower levels of inflammation, and a significant improvement in body composition and aerobic fitness. Intermittent fasting is a form of calorie restriction that is currently trending. Intermittent fasting involves periods of fasting from 2 to 12 hours a day or one day a week. In a study tracking heart disease patients for approximately four and a half years, it was observed that those who practiced fasting had a slightly increased chance of survival. Unfortunately, I've not found longer studies involving calorie restriction or intermittent fasting. These kind of studies are very difficult to implement long term as participants have to undergo dietary changes for very long periods of time. But many short term studies suggest benefits in inflammation and other markers that indicate that there might be some health benefits. What is easier to do is just to look at diet itself because diet of course has a huge impact on our lifespan. Who would have guessed? In one study, scientists determined longevity-associated diets. Longevity-associated diets generally include a high intake of vegetables, legumes, and dairy, a moderate intake of whole grains, fruit, fish, and white meat, and a low intake of red meat, eggs, sugar-sweetened beverages, and refined grains. It has been calculated this diet can raise the life expectancy of a 40-year-old by up to 10 years. And then there are other compounds that might help to prolong lives, as we've covered in the past, so you might want to check these videos out later. Diets also go hand in hand with weight, and of course there are many associations between weight and lifespan. Being overweight, as traditionally defined by Body Mass Index, or BMI, is associated with a reduction in life expectancy of 3.3 years. Severe obesity is linked to a reduction of 8.1 to 10.3 years. Some studies go even further, suggesting that extreme obesity, defined as being at least 100 pounds over normal weight, could potentially shorten lifespan as much as 14 years. So yeah, diet and exercise, who would have guessed? Next one is smoking. Smoking, once advertised as the choice of young America, your best friend, or having no adverse effects, is harmful to us. Smoking is linked to a variety of diseases including lung cancer, COPD, heart disease, stroke, or asthma. Not surprisingly, but the impact of smoking on lifespan depends on how much you smoke. Smoking more than 20 cigarettes a day throughout life is associated with a reduction of 13 years. Smoking between 10 and 20 cigarettes a day is linked to a 9-year decrease in life expectancy. And irregular smoking is linked to a 5-year decrease in life expectancy. But of course, the effect size depends on the frequency and what kind of cigarettes are smoked. But fortunately, some of the effects of cigarettes are reversible. If someone quits before the age of 35, their life expectancy is not affected. And if they quit before the age of 50, then their mortality risk is reduced by half. So I guess it's never too late. Fortunately, smoking seems to be in decline, at least in some countries. In 1965, 42% of the US population smoked. This number has been reduced to 14.9% today. However, smoking is still linked to 100,000 deaths a year in the US. Similar to cigarettes, alcoholic beverages can also negatively impact our lifespan, with one exception. And that's an exception you have probably heard, which is the low intake of red wine. Low red wine consumption is associated with a lower risk of developing heart disease, but other types of alcoholic beverages seem to increase the risk of cancer. 
Drinking roughly five pints of beer or five glasses of wine a week is associated with a reduction lifespan of roughly six months. Drinking 10 pints or 10 glasses of wine a week reduces life by roughly one to two years. And 15 pints or glasses of wine are associated with a four to five years reduction in life expectancy. In one study, it was found that people who were diagnosed with alcohol use disorder had a 24 to 28 years reduction in life expectancy. And then of course, there is genetics. Our DNA shapes every aspect of our lives, including our lifespan. It is estimated that getting to age 90 is roughly 30% explained by genetics and 70% by health behaviors. But the contribution of genetics increases over time. And this means that if you have any age-related disease running in your family, that you also have a higher and higher chance to get it. And that means that we cannot do too much, except for two things, prevention and detection. If you know, for example, that many of your family members suffer from heart disease, high blood pressure, or some form of cancer, then you also might be at risk. And this means that you then might want to do regular checkups with your doctor. In this manner, you might be able to completely prevent the disease or at least slow down its progression. And that can help a lot. So always check what's happening in your genes. Of course, there are some real life examples of people who can show us how to live long and healthy lives. Brian Johnson is a tech multimillionaire from Utah who made headlines in October 2021 with the announcement of his anti-aging project, Project Blueprint. His goal? To extend his life as much as possible. While Johnson follows various healthy lifestyle choices, he also goes a bit overboard. These changes include a healthy diet, regular exercising, and drawing blood from his son? Okay, an another try. He tracks his sleep quality and takes over 100 supplements a day? Okay, an another try. He daily collects his stool samples and tracks his night timer. While Johnson's commitment to various lifestyle choices is associated with an increased lifespan, he also goes a bit overboard. So let's not look at people who try to live long, but instead people who actually have lived a long life. 2008. An American reporter arrives at the Greek island Ikaria. Some weeks ago, he had received an email. A colleague wrote him that Ikaria harbors one of the most significant secrets in modern medicine. Longevity. While people live for 80 years on average, people in Ikaria enjoy much longer lives, with about 1 in 3 living into the 90s and many reaching over 100 years. The locals also have a lower risk of developing dementia or chronic disease and they seem to live very active lives. This makes Ikaria one of the few blue zones we have. Blue zone is a term that is used for regions with high concentrations of individuals living to be 100 years or older. Other recognized blue zones include Sardinia, Okinawa, Nicoya or Loma Linda. Intrigued by this phenomenon, the reporter set out to uncover the factors contributing to the longevity. And he discovered that the residents nearly lived perfect life when it comes to healthy aging. Most individuals resided in their own homes and maintained a sense of purpose, often continuing to work into old age. Many were also married and benefited from strong social support. There was a sense of community and individuals took care of each other. Stress levels were low, with many not even carrying watches or phones. Their diet primarily consisted of unsaturated fats with low processed sugars and they maintained an active lifestyle with regular physical activity. And that's why Karen's live so long. Does it mean that everyone who engages in regular exercise, maintains a healthy diet and has strong social support lives up to 100 years? No, of course not. This is not how life works. Numerous factors affect life expectancy. However, statistically speaking, a long and more importantly, a healthy life is much more probable. And that is why I made this video that we're all informed about this option. I'm really interested to know what kind of lifestyle choices do you follow? This video took really long to make, so let me know if you enjoyed it and we might make similar videos in the future. And until then, live long and prosper. Yeah. If you're interested in other ways scientists try to slow down aging, you might like these videos.